Holy moly, just look at this thing. It's the world's first 240 Hertz OLED ultra wide gaming monitor. And it's a big boy, 45 inches. Although I know for a fact that curve is definitely gonna split opinion. Now this is basically the same monitor, the same panel as that ridiculous Corsair Flex OLED you may have seen, where you've got the grab handles on the side and you can literally crank it from flat to curved. This is the same size, roughly the same specs, but without the flex. So you've always got this strong 800R curve, although it does make it $300 cheaper than the Corsair. So if you did fancy using this for work, designing, creative stuff, and you want to take advantage of that beautiful OLED panel and the 98.5% roughly DCI-P3 color accuracy, it is pretty color accurate, you're probably not gonna love this curve, certainly not for doing anything with straight lines. And I suppose that may be one reason why you would consider paying the extra for the flex because you can go from work to play mode. Whereas this is part of LG's Ultra Gear family, so it's very much geared towards gamers. And I've paired this monster of a monitor with my pretty beefy 4090 and 13th gen Intel setup, hoping to get the most out of that 240Hz refresh. There is a problem though. Well, a couple of problems actually. Firstly, the price. It's $1,700, which is certainly not cheap. Although I guess given you're getting some pretty cutting edge tech in the form of an OLED 240Hz 45 inch ultra wide, that's never gonna be cheap. So I can almost forgive it. But what is more of a deal breaker, and really you have to be sitting here in person in front of the monitor, is the resolution. This thing is 3440 by 1440, which at 45 inches gives us a pixel per inch density of just 82. The same PPI as roughly a 10TP 27 inch monitor. And actually it's a whole lot worse, or at least more obvious on here because of the sheer size of it. It's like going with a 2560 by 1080 on a 34 inch ultra wide. The resolution is just too low. You can just about see individual pixels, particularly on the desktop or when there's text. Although I must say it is less obvious during gameplay. Now, having said that, even with my 4090 rig here, I'm still barely able to consistently hit 240 FPS with maxed out settings in AAA games. While a higher 5120 by 1440 res or something would be great, it would of course have a big impact on your performance and therefore the ability to take advantage of the 240 Hz. So I'm feeling a bit torn. I feel like the solution would be just a smaller display. I would take this with a 40 or 42 inch screen so then the pixel print density would be a little bit higher and maybe it could be a couple of hundred dollars cheaper as well. And also consider while this was technically launched and open to pre-order in December 2022, uh, really it's going on sale early 2023, this is a brand new, super high-end, hopefully quite future-proof display and already for $1,700, we're talking about compromise. So it's like an understandable decision they've made, but it still takes away from the experience of this. But let's park that for a minute. What else do we get with this? Well, G-Sync compatibility and FreeSync Premium Pro. We also get a 0.03 millisecond response time. We're now talking hundredths of a second response, which is insanely fast. And of course that 240 Hz will also help reduce latency as well. We're looking at 500 nits of brightness in SDR and 650 with HDR, supporting HDR10. So brightness is decent, but the HDR performance isn't going to blow you away. And compared to some other OLED displays and particularly mini LED panels, this just can't match the brightness. What we do get though is this pretty incredible anti-reflective coating, which kind of mattifies the screen. Because obviously with this 800R curve, it picks up basically every light source in the known universe. So while you do lose a bit of that rich inkiness of a regular glossy OLED, given how curvy this is, you want this kind of anti-reflective coating. And while I can't cut out the brightest windows, it does a really good job. As for connections, we have a headphone jack, a couple of USBs, one DisplayPort 1.4, and also two HDMI 2.1s. But next question, how do you control this thing? Well, there's a couple of options. Firstly, you have this one tiny button down here, which brings up a pretty limited on-screen display. And it's a bit of a pain to use, if I'm honest. You have to press everything individually. And if you want to change the brightness all the way, you have to press it a hundred times, which is frankly ridiculous. Most of the time though, you're gonna to wanna to use this guy. It's a handy little remote which is bundled with the monitor. Looks a bit like a TV remote. And as you can see, if I had to unscrew this tiny little Phillips uh, screw head here because the battery needs replacing. It doesn't come with a battery, it's a little round one. And this has a ton of options. 
various picture modes for different gaming presets and game adjust you can also turn on or off adaptive sync you've got black stabilizer turning on crosshair as usual gaming stuff uh, and also in picture adjust you can change the brightness much more easily than the, using the on-screen button underneath and there really is a huge amount of customization here now what i would recommend is going to sharpness and just dropping this down to maybe 50 and that will take away a little bit from that sort of pixelated look that we get because of that lower resolution you can also change the aspect ratios and you've also got picture by picture or people and this way you can have your PC and maybe your console, your laptop hooked up at the same time. And then finally, in general, we have the hexagon lighting settings at the back. You've got a couple of different sound out options. Obviously, this doesn't have any built-in speakers. And in terms of preventing burn-in and looking after your OLED monitor, you've got these specific OLED care settings with image cleaning, pixel cleaning. By default, it puts itself to sleep if it's inactive for 15 minutes. So right now I'm in PBP mode, so I've got my Windows 11 desktop here from a PC and my PS5 here via HDMI, but you can see the PlayStation is still stretched. So if I jump back into the regular settings, you can see I've got the aspect for both screens. So the sub I believe is the PS5, let's change that to original. It's fixed, it's no longer stretched. The downside is we do have this letterboxing at the top and bottom to preserve that 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but it means it's perfectly playable. But what if you want to game full screen and take advantage of the full 45 inches with a console? Well, again, let's pick up the remote, jump into the settings menu. Let's change PPP back to full screen. So just the one, and then we'll select HDMI and change the aspect ratio of that to original. And there we go. Now it does mean you have this pillar boxing other side, but that's still a pretty big screen. And of course being OLED, it looks lovely. And it's also up to 120 Hertz on console. Although of course, remember this is limited to 120. You're not gonna get 240 FPS. We also don't get any built-in speakers, which isn't a big deal for most gamers, but it can be handy sometimes if you don't want to put a pair of headphones on. But on the plus side, I love the look of this thing. The thin, symmetrical bezels look smart and keep what is a bit of a monster of a monster as low profile as possible. We also have a nice bit of go faster RGB on the back, and considering the size of this thing, there's less screen wobble than I would have expected. And it also has a good amount of flexibility with tilt, pivot, and height adjustments. So it is genuinely an epic display. When you are gaming, you kind of forget about that lower resolution. As I say, it's merely on the desktop or with fine details and text that you do notice it. When you're gaming like this, the OLED panel, the 240 Hz, the super fast response time, and the pretty high color accuracy all add up to make this, if you'll pardon the cliche, one of the most immersive gaming monitors I've ever used. So for $1,700 with that relatively low resolution, I don't think it would be my top choice of gaming monitor, as impressive as it is. What I think I would do if you can live without the ultra wide curved and also a slightly lower refresh rate is go for one of the 42 or 48 inch 4K OLEDs from both LG and ASUS ROG. So it's not exactly apples to apples, but I think I would take one of those and save some money than go for one of these right now. As much as I do love this, I just think it's too much money and too low resolution. But what about you? Could you find room for this 45 inch curved OLED on your desk? Or do you think it's a bit overkill? And also, do you agree with my criticism about the resolution? Or do you think it's fair enough and a sensible choice for this kind of display? I will leave a link to this in the description below if you want to check it out. And also, if you've got any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.